Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to work on the two-tail distribution, doing a real problem, uh, or at least getting closer to a real problem. Uh, and so what we're going to do is give you the null and the alternate hypothesis, give you all the information, and we're going to figure out if we reject this null hypothesis or not. Let's say the null hypothesis is that the uh, mean of whatever it is I'm talking about uh, is 195. This could be the length of, of cars coming off an assembly line in centimeters or in, or in, or in feet or whatever. It could be for an 18-wheeler. Uh, but anyway, it's the length of something or it's the width of something or it's the mass of something. It's some physical number where this is the mean. And we think right now that our machine is producing whatever it is, 195 centimeters long, let's say. All right, but we do some research. Some new guy comes in, and consultant or whatever, and says, no, no, we don't think it's 195 anymore. So this is the alternate hypothesis. Notice it doesn't say left or right. It doesn't say greater than less. It just says that it's no longer equal to 195. And these two are mathematical complements of one another, as they always have to be. So to test this, we select 20 of these things off the assembly line, maybe 20 cars, 20 18-wheelers, whatever. And we decided we want to test this hypothesis at an alpha of 0 0.05. Now think for a second, what would that be in terms of level of confidence? 1 minus 0.05 is 0.95 which would be 95% level of confidence. That's a pretty typical level of confidence. 98, 95, somewhere in there is typically what you're going to be seeing in the real world. Uh, if you have lots and lots of data, you might go to 98 or 99%. So we have alpha 0.05. And from the data, from the 20 cars that we pull off the assembly line, we calculate a value of T, which is 3.11. This comes from the sample data, and I have it. Uh, I haven't showed you how to calculate that yet, but we will get there, I promise you, very soon. So we need to draw a picture, or maybe even more than one picture. So this is going to be a t-distribution because we have a sample size less than 30, and we're talking about the mean of something. And we know it's going to look bell-shaped, even though the exact shape of it depends on the degrees of freedom, which depends on how many samples we have. But anyway, that's basically the idea here. And how do we set up our rejection regions for a two-tailed test? Well, we know that alpha is 0.05, so that has to be in the tails, right? If it were a left-hand test, then all of that alpha would be in that tail. If it were a right-hand test, all of that alpha would be in the other tail. But since this is a two-tail test, half of this alpha is in one tail, half of this alpha is in the other tail. So this tail over here is going to have an area of alpha over 2, and when we take alpha over 2, 0.05 over 2, we get 0.025. So the area of this little tail here is 0.025. It's half of this guy. And we have the exact mirror image going on on the other side. 